Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing something else that was recently discovered about black holes. And more specifically about what happens extremely close to black holes and how they reflect the entire universe, creating an extremely interesting feature known as the photon ring. The feature that was actually originally proposed back in 1979. It was in this paper by the famous Jean-Pierre Luminet, who is also famous for creating the first ever simulation of an actual black hole, the one that you see right here. He's actually also a prolific blogger, so check out his blog if you'd like to learn a little bit more about all of his studies, and of course a little bit more about black holes as well. As always, the link for this is in the description below. But more specifically, we're going to be discussing this theoretical paper you see right here, that actually goes into a little bit more mathematics and finally identifies the exact mathematics we need to predict and finally finds a way to analyze and to calculate the various distances and various differences in regards to photon rings produced by different black holes. But to try to understand all of this, let's begin with the idea of the black hole structure. And so here, if we were to pick a random black hole that doesn't spin too much, we would actually find several particular features. We would obviously find what's known as the black hole shadow, that's where no light can escape anymore. Somewhere inside of this is the event horizon. We also have the beautiful accretion disk right here. And because of the light bending effects from the black hole, the disk is bent in such a way that you can actually see the far side on top and the underside of the disk on the bottom. Here's a somewhat simplified version of all of this and what it might kind of resemble. But then right here you can also see this ring known as the photon ring. And this is a really interesting and extremely tiny region around the black hole that technically reflects the entire universe back to us. And the closer toward the black hole you look, the more reflections of distant objects you're going to be able to see. And hypothetically, if you were to actually reach the event horizon and to somehow stand on the surface here, you would most likely see the entire universe repeating infinitely near the edges of the black hole itself. And because it's kind of hard to imagine this, this is maybe what it might look like. This is just a simulation using Space Engine. And so this region known as the Photon Ring is the region that we're actually discussing today. It's formed in the way that, well, it's actually described in this video, that was created by the Center for Astrophysics by Harvard and Smithsonian Museum. So here, when the light just kind of gets deflected, we get to see this. This is more or less how the image of the M87 black hole was created as well. But some light particles will actually sort of orbit around the black hole at least once, producing a slightly thinner ring. The ring that you see right here. And some of them might even have at least two orbits or even more, which will produce even a thinner ring with a lot more detail. And because of this, various types of rings are always produced by the black hole and by the photon ring, which technically may allow us to see the entire universe depending on the location we're looking at all of this from. And in theory, there are infinite numbers of these thin rings with various subrings, including various photons from different parts of the universe that have been collected by the photon shell itself. And each of these subrings, in some sense, represent the entire universe. This is basically an image of the universe reflected by the black hole, with each individual ring also representing a different time frame when the photons were captured. So in some sense, if we were to look at this as a kind of a movie of the universe, each ring is a single frame. But at the same time, this also produces various reflections of the same object. You can actually see the same object several times. Here's sort of the image explaining how all of this works as well, with the example in this case being some sort of a random galaxy. And the light from this distant galaxy is going to be hitting the black hole at different angles. Some light will get only bent a little bit, some light will do one orbit, where some light will actually have two different orbits. And all of this will produce reflections of the same object that hypothetically could be visible if you were in the right spot. All of this might also sort of look like this. But the question is, well, where do you have to be to see the second and third reflection, for example? You don't really get to see it from the same spot. You do have to be either closer or farther away. And interestingly enough, ever since the original publication by Lumine, it's been known that the reflections do repeat depending on the distance to the black hole. And so how much closer do you have to be to see the second reflection? Well, it's been known to be this number right here, e to the power of 2 pi, or approximately 535 times closer. 
But after four decades, this is actually the first time that the exact mathematical explanation has been provided for why this is so. Now, if you're a math buff, this paper is free to read, so you can check it out in the description below. But to be honest, it is relatively challenging and somewhat difficult to understand, which is actually why it took so long to prove all of this and to find a solution, mathematical solution, for why the photon rings seem to follow this pattern of e to the power of 2 pi. And this of course means that there is definitely a mathematical way to try to discover more of these reflections of the same object by following a very specific path and finding the exact location. Well, at the same time, the math provided in this paper allows us to study the gravitational effects around black holes and helps us understand what exactly happens around these regions that we don't really understand mathematically, regions such as inside the event horizon or regions right around the black hole as well. And so that hypothetical mirror image of a distant galaxy can also hypothetically help us understand black holes and help us understand gravity by studying and also analyzing the effects located in these photon rings. At the same time, the scientists behind this paper also calculated that, well, if the black hole is spinning, the distance suddenly decreases quite dramatically. If it was 535 times for a non-spinning black hole, Considering all black holes are spinning, this will dramatically decrease depending on how much they warp the spacetime around them. With a fast spinning black hole, you can actually technically see the reflections a lot more quicker. Each image could be now anywhere from 50 to maybe 5 to maybe even 2 times closer to the black hole as opposed to the original number 535. But this is of course in theory. In practice though, it's still extremely difficult. Now going back to that image of M87, even here, even despite many years, the scientists still have not been able to detect exactly where the photon ring is. Now, the ring itself should be somewhere in this region and could maybe even be detected if more telescopes are added to the Event Horizon Telescope, but at the moment it's still invisible. It's still extremely hard to detect simply because, well, it's just too thin and because the black hole that we're studying is extremely far away as well. But if one day we somehow are able to see one of these photon rings even from that M87 black hole, it might be even possible to use some of the photons from that ring to reconstruct certain distant objects somewhere in the universe, at least hypothetically speaking. And by looking at several versions of the same reflection, in this case that hypothetical galaxy, we're also technically seeing different frames of the same movie. And so in theory at least, a reflection that was created by the photon ring of a distant galaxy where we're able to capture several versions of the same reflection might help us create some kind of a miniature movie of a certain distant galaxy, showing us how the galaxy changed over time. Or actually, a more likely scenario is that we might be able to see the light from a distant supernova, and if we're able to detect different reflections of it, we might also be able to recreate how it changed over time. Although, at least for now, all of this is just theory. There's really no practical way of doing any of this just yet, and even despite all of the work from the Event Horizon Telescope, we still have so many years to go before we can actually even see a single ring somewhere out there. For now, it's a very theoretical concept, but something that the scientists are really desperately trying to find a way to look at and to study in detail. So basically, the photon ring right here is the next holy grail of the scientific discovery. Because not only does it show us the universe, the entire universe, from a different perspective and a different frame of reference, but it also provides a lot of information about the black hole and the gravity around the black hole. All of this is of course extremely important for us in order to learn more about the universe itself. But I guess for now that's all I wanted to mention. It's a very theoretical paper, but it is a really cool theory and a really cool explanation. Once we learn more, or once we actually discover something else about black holes, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out some of the other videos about black holes, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful Prusin t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.